this is section two. In section one, we talked about MVC and OOP uh, in relation to Magento. And now we're going to talk about event-driven architecture. And um, we'll be going through this and, and, and taking a look at what composes a, uh, an event-driven architecture system. And what I'd like to point out uh, first, I guess, is that uh, you know, what's the point for having <laughs> an event-driven architecture? Well, if you have a system that's as big as Magento, uh, you often have a need to uh, get access to the system in, in, in any, of its, any of its various processes. So that really is a problem that EDA solves. It basically, anywhere in the application, uh, no matter what's going on in the current um, stack of execution, you actually get uh, a mechanism to uh, access either uh, members or processes that are going on in the code. Now, huh, yeah, so the, the basic players in event-driven architecture, you have this, um, in Magento anyway, is, is, is the, the event, which is the thing that happens, as well as the observer, which is uh, you know, something that's actually watching it happen. And uh, with, with observers, you get, um, I guess with the observers, you get access to, um, access to again, that, 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 that point in the code that you really need access to, regardless of anything else that's going on. So that has some strengths and some benefits and some real weaknesses that we'll look at at the end of the lesson. Uh, let's see. Now, the big, probably the big characteristic, though, of the, this implementation in Magento is that you have the system that, that pushes the events. Basically, you have something that says, hey, this is happening. As opposed to other systems, uh, another approach could be a polling system, which would be from the outside saying, hey, is this happening? Hey, is this happening? Well, you couldn't do that in Magento. There's, there's tons of observers, and uh, that would be incredibly inefficient. So uh, what Magento does is actually just say, hey, this is going on, and let me give you the key players that are happening right now. So. Um, the advantages, of course, uh, it, it really it gives you immediate access, uh, immediate access to, um, you know, say you're in a, a checkout. You know, it might give you access to the customer object. It might give you access to the quote, and uh, that's great because that whole checkout process, as we'll see, is is fairly complex. Um, you can really um, you can really spend probably the least amount of time doing EDA um, as far as making something happen. But, but the drawback, of course, is that um, because it's so disconnected from the, the logical flow, well, guess what? <laughs> it's really, really, uh, it's really complex <laughs> in that you can have several different events um, firing at any given time, any number of observers uh, observing those events, changing data, doing things, and you don't necessarily know um, the order that they're going to happen or... Um, or necessarily what's going on. It, it may not be immediately apparent from, you know, stepping through the code. So it's just another place that you have to debug. That, that's the big disadvantage. So, and, well, and then the other, the other <laughs> disadvantage, of course, is that having this event-driven architecture, having this system dispatching events, checking to see if there are any observers, well, it's just more processing load. So this is one of my favorite slides, actually, in this entire course. And the, um, and it's really because this is exactly what happens in Magento. You have the, the execution stack, and then uh, along the way, well, you'd have any number of events firing. There are lots and lots of events. But typically what happens is the event is dispatched, and the, uh, the event architecture will basically check and see, check the configuration to see if there are any observers. In this case, there are several observers, and you can have any number of them. And what happens generally are the key pieces of data, the key objects, are passed in here, and then uh, each of these observers may or may not do something to it. You know, may interface with a remote system, who knows? So the big point that you should take away here is that you have these observers, and they're all sequential. So basically, the execution flow jumps from here to here, and then sequentially through all of these. Now, of course, if you have a fatal error, <laughs> you're, you're going to die. It's not like you <laughs> this breaks, and you just go back here and go on your merry way. So if you have an observer that's working in a, a Again, in checkout, you have to be really careful because if something goes bad, people can't buy things, and your customers are going to be really, really upset. Okay, so um, this is uh, this is one of our favorite exercises, 
And it really, I think it drives home this, this concept because one of the big things that we see in this course is a confusion about, um, about actions and events. So remember that the event is the thing. So we're going to divide you guys into three different teams and we're going to discuss, uh, well, well, we'll discuss these three different things. Uh, a soccer match or some other thing. We've used cricket. Uh, that you, can, you can take any of these and run with them. So basically we're going to have this, this environment that's analogous to Magento. Yeah. So we're going to have this environment which is analogous to Magento. Um, so this, 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 this ecosystem of the code. So you'll have a soccer match. You'll have uh, cricket. You'll have a kitchen or a bar or a police station. The police station, by the way, is probably the easiest one to do because police stations have dispatchers. So what we're going to do is actually just look through, um, look through the, the components and identify um, what's going on, what the dispatcher or dispatchers are, and uh, what kind of processes that can trigger. So I'll divide you guys up into a few different groups and uh, we'll proceed.